Boys, everyone has an opinion, but few know the facts, okay? I get my in-depth match stats and analytics at alloutrugby.com for all your ratings, rankings, and rantings. Hey guys, welcome to All Out Rugby TV. My name is Tank Lanning, and today I'm indulging myself. We are talking the dark arts of scrumming. With me is uh, Stormer's, I would say loose head prop, but these days we use on the other side of the scrum as well, mm -hmm. Oli Kevel. Oli, how are you, sir? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's get right at it. What is the primary job of a loose head prop? I think, uh, well, primarily for any prop, scrummaging is the sort of bread and butter. And then for me, it's to dominate the scrum, put my opposite tight head under a bit of pressure, and then do some loose work as well, clean, uh, maybe be a strong ball carrier. Yeah. Best uh, tight head you've come up against? It's a difficult one. When I first started playing Super Rugby, I think there was it was a new experience for me, and I wasn't as experienced as I am now, and I found it a lot more difficult sure. with a lot more of the international tight heads. But I think one that really sticks out is uh, Ben Franks for the Crusaders. Yeah. Uh, he was, and I played him in my first year. I played against him, and yeah, he was very decent. So now, I mean, I've been quite vocal on my. Uh, anti the move from the loose head to tight head. Um, mm. I don't think it's working with a couple of the guys out there. How difficult is it to move across from one to three? And if you are going to make the move, what's the biggest change? I think the, the best way I could describe it to someone who didn't really understand scrummaging was that it's, from, it's like going from riding with your left hand to riding with your right hand. Okay. Everything, I mean, you're working a lot more with the other side of your body. Uh, and instead of maybe working up as a loose head, trying to break a tight head shape upwards, you're now working downward to try and cramp a loose head up as a tight head. Uh, for me, it's more to help the team out and for my personal growth as a rugby player. I've been working with Peter de Villiers quite a lot in the off season and I haven't had a lot of game time at super rugby level at tight head, so it will be interesting to see what happens uh, but so far, I'm enjoying it. And do you think there's a there's a there's a physical shape that is better suited to loose head and a physical shape better to tight head, or are they much the same these days? I think with the new scrum laws, it's a lot easier for all shapes and sizes in a way. I think in the past, if you were a shorter tight head going against a tall loose head, you could maybe cramp him for space a bit more mm. uh, with the hits. Now with the bind, you can sort of get your spacing straight away. Uh, ideally, you'd probably want your loose and tight head, your tight head to be a bit taller than your loose head, um, and your tight head to sort of lead the charge. I think in nowadays, a taller tight head is probably more explosive, or more powerful. Yeah, we led by Cole Hammond, who was the yeah. Best well, I think he's. Tight heads, eh? I rate him as one of the best tight heads okay, to yeah. ever play the game. Yeah. Uh, is there a particular scrum that sticks out in your memory? Uh, jeez, I think more from a sort of comical side, we played uh, we played against the Sharks in Curry Cup about two years ago, uh, 2015. I, mean, I think it was Dobbo's first year, and I left. I can't. I won't say who the opposite tight head was, Come but um, <laughs> I, he got plenty airtime, uh, and we scrummed right over the ball, and his feet were dangling in the air. But the best part was they then moved the camera to a picture of my dad sitting in a box watching the game and my dad just pumping his fist it was, it will always stick in my mind. Okay, so I mean, you say you don't do it, but uh, there are props out there that milk the penalty. Um, if you were to do it, what do you think the easiest way to milk a penalty would be come scrum time? Uh, I'm, I, it's difficult to say, but I think that one way you could sort of milk a free kick is to not really accept the hit on engagement. If the one team really pulls back quite hard on the engagement, uh, the ref might see that as an early engagement from the one side and that get, give a free kick to the defending team. Uh, otherwise, if you're tight head, you can try and drop the loose heads behind, uh, which uh, you see loose heads getting pinged a lot for that sort of stuff, me especially. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's difficult to say, it depends on the player. Good Bishop's boy, obviously doesn't look penalties in this jump <laughs> club. 
Speaking of which, I mean, you've you've had a you've, you've played with some cool sides over your over your career, your young career. Mm. Is, are there any particular sides or games that stick out? Myself and Nizam, uh, Sam Lane, all played in that Bishop side that beat Paul Jim at that Newland Schools Day, which was it was the first win against Bishop against Paul Jim for me, okay. and it was I think it's a really great outing for schoolboys to go play at Newlands for the first time. Oli, great pleasure. Good luck uh, for the rest of the season. Thanks very much, Dan. I enjoyed it. The players continue shouting at the TV voice. Go to alladrugby.com to have your say by rating the players. Alladrugby.com for all your ratings, rankings and rantings. All right.